My name is Amber Moore, and I'm the project archivist on the Joseph Eccles and Evelyn Gibson Lowry collection here at the Atlanta University Center's Robert W. Woodruff Library. Today, I, with my colleagues, Kathy Miller and Kara Livingston, will discuss our approaches to producing engaging and dynamic content to promote the Lowry collection. Last year, the library received a grant to both process and digitize the collection and this is so exciting because the Lowry's were such a dynamic duo. We wanted to find ways to promote the collection and also bring awareness to their legacy. So Archives and Digital Services teamed up with our library's internal communications department to try to find new ways to promote and publicize the collection on our social media platforms. And let me tell you, we're having a blast. Um, so check out our first reel actually introducing the Joseph Eccles and Evelyn Gibson Lowry collection here at our library. We have some exciting news to share. We've started processing the collection of civil rights leaders, Joseph and Evelyn Lowry. Last year, the Lowry family donated hundreds of boxes of items kept by the Lowry's throughout the years. These items include historical photographs, letters, sermons, speeches, writings, SCLC and SCLC women records, audio and video recordings, and more. Over the next several months, a grant-funded team will continue to organize, describe, and digitize the collection to ensure researchers will have access to everything. Check back here to learn more from the Joseph Eccles and Evelyn Gibson Lowry collection. Hi, my name is Kira Livingston, and I am the graphic designer and social media strategist for the AUC Woodruff Library. For the past six months, I've worked with the Lowry Collection team to help create engaging social media content to promote the Lowry archival acquisition. When the Lowry team reached out for help with promotion, I immediately saw an opportunity to leverage social media trends to draw attention to the rich history of the collection. Social media allows the opportunity to reach your audience where they are, online. Physical archives face the challenge of requiring your audience to show up in person to view collections. Even digital archives face challenges of creating a consistent flow of traffic to digital collections. The role of using social media to promote your archival collections is to bridge the gap between your audience and collections by meeting them where they are. By bringing the archives to your audience, you make it easy for them to become invested in your work. Now that you're familiarized with social media and the benefits of using it to promote content, here are seven steps to success on social media. Step one, identify your audience. Our Archives Research Center is unique in that it is located in a library that serves the oldest and largest consortium of historically Black colleges and universities in the world. Our audience is university faculty, staff, students, scholars, administrators, and alumni. Step two, pick your platforms. In a truly digital world, there seems like there is a new social media platform or feature almost every month. The bottom line is, if you want to increase exposure and reach new and existing users, then you should consider at least one social media channel. After considering our goals and audience, we have decided to use Instagram feed, reel, and story posts along with TikTok videos to share content. So far, we've seen the most success on IG Reels. Step 3. Research and choose content ideas. Before deciding on content ideas, I share a master list of video concepts. We use TikTok analytics, TikTok hashtags, Google trends, and Instagram analytics to research and compile relevant digital trends. Step four, shoot content. Once ideas are chosen, we prepare to shoot content. Speaking roles are assigned and dates are scheduled to record video and audio. Because most of our content is short form, 60 seconds or less, we're able to record unscripted video intros and rely on scripts to record audio that can be used for voiceovers on archival content. We have found that a production schedule that includes two reels per month is the most realistic for our platforms. Step 5. Edit. After we've shot content, I take some time to edit. For post-production, I use a mix of mobile and desktop applications that I will share more on later. Step six, post. Once content has been edited and approved, it's time to post. Here, it is important to write engaging captions and spend time on hashtag research to make sure that your posts are reaching the right audience. If posting on Instagram, you also want to upgrade your account to a business account so that you can use the analytics feature to select appropriate posting times and days. And step seven, promote your archives. 
After posting feed or real posts, use stories to drive traffic to your collection. Instagram has a button feature that allows you to share links directly in story posts. Updating your link in bio to an external landing page like Linktree, Milkshake, or Buffer also allows you to share multiple relevant links. Utilizing these seven steps for each video in this series has led us to see results on social media. Our real content for this collection has received an increased amount of engagement compared to any other content we have posted. It has received 334% more likes than our other content, 277% more comments, 168% more saves, and 1,288% more shares. That's a huge increase. Overall, the increase in engagement on this content tells us that our audience enjoys this content format and is able to digest the information that we're sharing with them in this way. To get started creating digital content for your archives, you don't need much. I recommend starting with something that you have on you 24 seven, your phone. Our smartphones are way more powerful than you may think. They contain a quality camera, editing apps, learning platforms, and a way to share content. One of the largest benefits of using social media as a form of promotion is that it's extremely accessible. Creating content is free or low cost, and once shared, it has the potential to reach an infinite number of people. Even if social media isn't your forte, almost anything can be learned online thanks to free and low cost online tutorials. So some tools that I suggest getting started with are a smartphone with a camera, internet access to TikTok and Instagram, editing apps like CapCut if you have an iPhone, Final Cut Pro if you have a Mac, or Adobe Premiere for Windows and Mac, a tripod for stability comes in handy, and online tutorials from YouTube, Coursera, and Skillshare. Now that I've shared a little bit about how we publicize our content on social media, check out one of our most popular posts from the Lowry Archival team. Hello everyone, my name is Kathy Miller and I am the Digitization Project Manager for the Lowry Collection. And I'm here to talk to you about breaking out of our traditional archival mindset where social media creation is concerned. Uh, alongside the work of processing and digitizing this collection simultaneously, which could be a conference panel discussion in and of itself, the Lowry Project team has worked to think about new ways in which to make promotion and outreach around the collection happen. As Kira has shared with you, our partnership with the communications department has opened a completely new pathway of outreach for us, and the struggle to focus on outreach is real. I have always held that the reason archivists are not great at promotion, outreach, and advocacy is because we are so busy doing the multitude of other tasks that are expected of us. It truly has helped to have a partner in this outreach creation that can drive the ideas and processes forward. I recognize that not every organization, especially ones where you are a loan arranger, can benefit from the support we have. But hopefully some of the tips and ideas Kira has shared can help even loan arrangers feel like dynamic social media outreach is a feasible option. In embarking upon this project of creating Instagram Reels, the main contention points, at least for me, were being willing to step out of my comfort zone and trying to think of how the work we are doing could even translate to an Instagram Reel to begin with. Because let's face it, spreadsheet work doesn't come across as exciting at first or second glance. But Kira has been a huge help in the creative ideas department, and it's also been a meshing of minds where Amber, myself, and the other Lowry team members have described to her the work we are doing, and then she thinks about how that could best translate to a video production. Regarding the comfort zone comment, I will openly admit to not liking being on camera, at least not for extended periods of time. I feel rather like Joseph Lowry's face looks like in the photo you see on this slide, the deer in the headlights. That's still the case, but with these reels, Kira has been able to pair brief video appearances with voiceovers, which takes a lot of the pressure off needing to memorize what you want to say and the performance anxiety that comes part and parcel with public speaking. In expanding out how we think about the promotion for the Lowry Collection, we also connected with the folks at Georgia Tech's library 
to record an episode of their partner show with WREK called Lost in Stacks. This was an excellent opportunity for us to highlight the work we are doing and hopefully drum up some excitement in the Atlanta community and beyond about the Lowry Collection and the many rich stories that can be found in it. In closing, the big question left to us is how can we continue to think outside of the box for outreach and promotion? With creativity and the ever necessary, but often in short supply, resource of time, the Lowry Project team hopes to continue to create dynamic content shared out via Instagram. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the point of metrics and the return on investment for this social media content. Will we see more researchers wanting to dig into the Lowry collection because of the information we are sharing via Instagram, the Lost in the Stacks podcast, blogs, other forms of outreach that we create? As with any social media outreach, the answer as to the engagement input output return we will see is the good old, it depends. I'm going to leave this as an open-ended point that we can dig into during Q&A if attendees would like to ask questions around the topic of return on investment. And with that, I will close out this pre-recorded content so that we can go to our live Q&A. Thank you.